Hi, Yarna Bees. So Michelle and I have sat here for a while, like while Charlene has been sick and we were thinking about things that we could do to keep our minds off of everything. And Michelle came up with the idea of doing a segment on my channel called Hooking and Whining. <laughs> now, that has a couple of different meanings. <laughs> Meaning, you know, we could either sit here and whine and bitch about stuff, or we could have wine. But because Rosalie from Yarn and Out does the wine thing, I figure we could do, well, coffee or coffee. whatever alcohol would we have it depends on the time of day <laughs> and and we can whine about stuff right or just talk about whatever whatever comes to mind and in this family when we talk there's some <laughs> some weird stuff that comes out of our mouth <laughs> and Bailey apparently wants to get involved as well oh puffer oh the mustard whining segment yeah, she's she's gonna start going into you. You you tell us about that mailman Bailey. Yes, King. Okay. Enough. <laughs> so so yeah. So we figured um, Ashley, my daughter, came up with the idea. There she is. Um, she came up with the idea of doing a Q and A like I did with Tia, and then in a couple days or tomorrow or whenever, I'm gonna do another Q and A with her with Ashley. <laughs> So, that should be fun. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, anyways. Um, yeah, so I guess let's just get down to it. Q&A with Michelle and Sandy. Anyway. Okay, so now we're going to do the Q&A. Ashley. She's gonna, Ashley's going to read out the questions for us, and she's going to be our camera person. So. Got the random generator here. Okay. Trying not to have flashbacks of elementary school where they're like, that's your cue, go on stage. And I broke down <laughs> crying and ran off. It's like trying to impress crocheters and I have like Dude. a big ball of yarn barf. It's, <laughs> it's better than me. They'd be like, oh, you have to do a speech. I'd be like, peace. <laughs> I'm out. Um, yeah, Michelle just got yarn barfed. So... <laughs> Oh, I guess I should tell you what we're doing first. Oh, yeah, that, that's um, a good idea. Yeah, so Michelle, I, I decided that I'm going to have a crochet along contest, whatever, uh, between Michelle and I, doing the same project with different colors of yarn and, uh, and see how they come out. So I've got it on our big TV screen. So, okay. Oh, side note. I actually really kind of think it was funny the colors Michelle picked for your competition. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was funny. I, I gave Michelle um, basically all rights to my yarn room. So intimidating. I was like paralyzed going, I live here now. You were like a kid <laughs> in a candy store. <laughs> so she was, she, it took her a while to figure out what she wanted to do. And then I was like, she picked her yarn and I went, oh, by the way, there's all this yarn too. <laughs> I totally bombarded her with yarn. <laughs> so when she came out, out into the living room to pick her yarn, after she picked her yarn, it was like my jaw kind of went because she picked the colors that my mom loved, right? And I think I've told you guys this before, but my mom's favorite color is Dusty Rose. And I've been attracted to Dusty Rose now for a while and I keep thinking my mom is working through me and picking my yarn for me <laughs> and <laughs> so um, so she ended up picking a uh, dusty a dark dusty rose really really pretty yeah so this is um this the, blah, 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 wait a oh, minute sorry. so this I'm one is <laughs> this one is the premier basic I don't know if you wanted to zoom okay all right all right so, okay, so this is the Premier Basic, and it's, oh, what's the color? It's called Rose, but it's a very, whoop, oh, okay, so Ashley is very <laughs> new at doing the camera work. Sorry, guys. I well, you wanted me to zoom in, but I missed, like, half your head. <laughs> so this is, um, it's a dark rose, like a dusty like a dusty rose. It's, it's so pretty. I love this yarn and it's so soft. 
Um, and then the second color that she picked was Premier Basic. And this one is Light Mauve. Now, I call it Mauve. We, I don't know if, if it's a Canadian thing or what, but we call it Mauve. But I noticed that a lot of people in the U.S. call it Mauve. So, to each his own. So this one I thought was really pretty too. And I think the two colors go really well. And then she picked... Her gurk gurk gurk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, loops and Threads Impeccable Big. Very big. And this color is Iran. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's basically off-white is what it is so she's doing uh, the, the pattern is basically uh, the first row the foundation row is a double crochet row and then it's two rows of V stitches and then the next row is half double crochet so she's gonna alternate and do two rows of the dark yep the half double crochet row is going to be the beige and the next row is going to be the light. And then she's just going to keep alternating. I, on the other hand, have done the Premier Basic. And this is, and I picked this, I don't, I think I picked this because this is one of Charlene's colors. I don't know. I, it just gravitated she, to me. She loves it. She loves these colors. Uh, and this color is Slate. Okay, so I did that one, and I did the Premier Basic White. And I'm just going to do two colors because <laughs> I don't have the brain space right now to deal with more than two colors. <laughs> I'm probably being way too optimistic. I just thought they looked nice together. <laughs> I might get partway through this and go, oh, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, so yeah, so that's what we're doing. Okay. Oh. I'm having issues. <laughs> oh, I'm going to take this off because I'm just going to get myself all tight. Oh man, it wouldn't be one of my videos without me not having words. And this so. is also a family trait. Oh yes, very much so. <clears throat> and it gets worse with age. <laughs> You've got so much to look for. Great. To you guys. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I finally got a good night's sleep after weeks. I slept like a rock the last two nights. This kidnapping was great. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, yeah, yeah, she really needed a break. But so. I mean, even after getting a good night's sleep, I still <laughs> <laughs> you, you still need stuff. to find your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the story goes that my mom taught. Michelle how to crochet. I didn't find any interest in it. I'm, I'm supposed to be doing half double crochets and I'm doing double crochets. I just did I that. I can't, I can't talk and do this at the same time. Oh my god. Um, so anyway, she taught Michelle how to crochet and then Michelle taught me how to do granny square many years later. How many granny square blankets did we make? Oh good god. I... I I could not get the concept of granny square down. It was the corners that really screwed me up. So anyways, so now I'm totally screwed up. <laughs> um, now I'm kind of expanding her horizon when it comes to crochet. So hence doing this kind of together. I thought, yeah. I thought it would be kind of fun. It is To fun. see how hers turns out and how mine turns out. Okay. Cro uh, pit. Yeah. Q&A. Q &A. <laughs> you, you sure you're ready? I I hope so. <laughs> this will be a feat. Can we crochet and answer questions? And, and so <laughs> you might end up saying. Can I answer questions? Can <laughs> I <like> crochet? <laughs> oh, you need to do a whole video like that. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I could keep that up. <laughs> I couldn't keep a straight face. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're ready for your question. Okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. Nothing too hard, okay? It's just a and random too personal. It's a random question generator. Okay. I don't pick it. <laughs> just gives it to me and I spit it out of you. YouTube you algorithm. Spit it out of me? Yep. <laughs> you spit it out of me. Yep. Okay. <laughs> YouTube algorithm might might not be okay if it gets too personal. <laughs> crochet, you're kinda of busy. You might just like say things yeah. you didn't mean to. Yeah, be in there. <laughs> I'll okay. laugh. It's yeah, it'll it'll be a good time. Okay. Wait, I need to sip the coffee. No. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, hey, we didn't do a cheers. Oh, uh, cheers. cheers. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, what do you wish you could tell yourself 10 years ago? And what do you think you'll want to tell your current self 10 years from now? You first. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh crap. Okay. Who do I want to tell myself 10 years ago? I think I would probably, well, I was in a rough time then. Scott had just passed away mm -hmm. not too long ago, and um, so I was, yeah, I was in a really, really bad state. Um, I think, jeez, I don't even know. Yeah, when you're in that state, it's like you don't really listen to anyone. And I you was travel back just, in time. Yeah, like, and, like yeah. thinking back to that point in our lives, everything was so messed up. Yeah. I think I would have told myself to, like, while we were going through that grief, to just stick to family more. Yeah. Yeah, I... Oh. We all kind of isolated ourselves in our own little heads. And yeah. I, I think I would have said... Stick to family more. Help each other get through it instead of being in our own little torture. Yeah. Um, I think I would probably tell myself, when you move to Nanaimo, don't hook up with the people you hooked up with. <laughs> Fair. You know, just because you're grieving and you're hurting, use your head a little bit more. Because I got myself into... Uh, a relationship that was toxic like really toxic all because I was so devastated um, I was afraid to be alone I was in a new place uh, I was getting older and I was thinking at that time I was I was thinking I don't really want to be with anybody else but I know I have to move on and I'm really, I'm, I need someone to hold me. And so I was trying to look for someone to get me through my grieving and I picked wrong. <laughs> you tell yourself not to force it? I, yeah, I, I, I picked way wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't George. I met George years later, but, um, yeah, oh boy, yeah. But you know what, you know, all the stuff that you went through led you to George. This is true. That's, see, that's the hard part is you'd be scared to change anything 10 years ago because... Uh, I feel like yeah. I'm embodying Auntie right now, just like... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's probably what I would tell myself is, you know, don't... Don't just jump into stuff because you're hurting. You know, let yourself grieve. I mean, everybody grieves differently, but, you know. What I would tell myself 10 years from now, don't be so hard on George. <laughs> like, seriously. Oh, my God, we got that on video. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I was a biatch to him in the beginning. Um, because I, yeah, I, I, yeah, it would be, don't be so hard on George. He's really trying and I have expectations that may be too high. Also you know? another family trait. We are very particular about a lot of things. Yes. Like how to fold. Yeah. How to oh. fold laundry. <laughs> yes. Um, how to load dishwashers, how, yeah. how to clean properly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, don't be so hard on him because he's, he's trying. And we're 
a pain in the ass, quite frankly. Yeah. Your turn. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> tell myself 10 years ago. Uh, little little 19-year-old Michelle. Don't oh. get married young. Yes. Be patient, think about it. Don't be such a people pleaser. Don't do things because people think that that is right for you. Do things that feel right to yourself, not what feels right, what what other people think is right for you. I, I think I would. I, I uh, definitely agree with this. <laughs> talking about bad relationships. Uh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Let's not do anything too personal. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, tell myself 10 years from now, uh, uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I feel like I'm, a, I'm in a very open-minded place in my life and I hope 10 years from now that I'll still be open-minded and practicing things like patience and you know, understanding and... What? You're the most patient person I think I know. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll go with that. Oh, since I got. I mean, with... okay, okay. She is more patient than us, yeah. but I think uh, compared to the typical person, um, yeah, oh, she has her moments. Since I got together with Gabriel, I feel like I've learned more patience in the last three years, almost four years, than in my whole life. Because he's the kind of guy that he appreciates everything. Everything has its place. So. You don't drink a cup of tea and do the dishes while you're changing the laundry over. You sit down and enjoy your tea. So I would tell myself 10 years from now Mom. to try to continue enjoying the tea and slowing down. Stop and smell the roses. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. But it doesn't show that. It doesn't that. show that. <laughs> I hate that when you're watching. Okay, there's a bitch. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, we got the whining okay. going. Yeah. Hooking and whining. Hooking and whining. <laughs> when you do a video, do the step by step. You know, I hate it when they say, okay, repeat these rows, but they don't show you all of it. They, they just go and they do it. And you don't get the full transition. No. So now here we are. We've done two rows of these stitches, one row of half double crochet. So now we're trying to figure out do we have to have, like, how do you how do you put the V stitches on top of each other when you've got a half double crochet row, and it doesn't work? So are they offset? Do we just go and do the skip two, go into the third, like they did on the first set, and then they're kind of yeah, they won't be, they'll be totally offset. Mm -hmm. So. Very confused. Two. So she doesn't show that. She just shows her after she's done all these rows. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Anyways, moving on. Okay, next. All right, questions. All right. Next question. Let me pull it up here again. Oh, oh, oh this will be good for mom. What makes you roll your eyes every time you hear it? Oh. I know this one. Oh. I know yours. Let's, anyway. let's, let's get that uh, look in there. <laughs> oh, it has to do with George. Oh, I would tell myself not to be so hard on George. What makes you roll your eyes? George. <laughs> okay. I didn't take very long. <laughs> so George always has these lines that he uses when he's answering the phone, Premier Carpet Cleaning. He he's always says, um, oh, how does it go now? It's like people have accused me of using you know models on my website, but they're really pictures of me, <laughs> and I'm going, oh God. You know, or he'd say, um, oh, God, there's so many I can't even think of them now. But he, every time he hits that line, uh, I just sit there and go, because oh. I've heard it so much, so much. And uh, and he gets customers like crazy with that. So um, the other thing is, is when he 
he tries to say lines to me, you know, about how beautiful I am or how, you know, how much he loves me and and it's it's almost facetious the way he says it. It's like <laughs> I just look, you know, they're so corny the things he says to me and I just look at him and go it's like those those pickup lines that guys use in the bar, you know, geez, what's your sign? <laughs> you know, like, and I think, oh my God, seriously? It's like, if you're going to give me a compliment, give me a real compliment. Don't sit there and... Be a cheese ball. It's like, <laughs> the corny stuff doesn't do it for me. I just look at him and go, really? <laughs> you don't just shoot back like, are you a library book? Yeah. I'm checking you out. <laughs> Are you rolling your eyes at me now? <laughs> okay, there's a storyline that goes with this. Oh, here we go. <laughs> her her other half is actually a librarian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so if Gabriel's watching, like, don't. I'm saving that one for when you graduate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. So, go ahead. What? <laughs> it's your turn. It's your turn. <laughs> um, I'm just going to have that go through my head now. <laughs> it makes me roll my eyes. If there's a competition, I get really, really cocky. And then when the other person starts chirping, I roll my eyes because I think I'm holier than thou and I'm going to win. <laughs> And it makes sense until I lose, and then it's surprising every time. <laughs> so, I think that's what makes me roll my eyes. <laughs> okay, so yours is going to be smaller, and she's using a bigger hook, so. <laughs> I, I do stitches really, really tight, so it's like our stitches almost look like they're the same size, and your hook's like sizes smaller yeah I'm using a seven the pattern calls for a size 10 yeah, and that's we're just like do. yeah so we're just kind of winging this <laughs> anyways okay moving on what's the craziest conversation you've overheard that I've overheard yes I don't even know Pretty much any conversation I overhear that involves my mother is the strangest one I've ever heard. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's the crazy conversation that I've overheard. It's There's crazy conversations that I'm a part of. <laughs> you know. Well, like, let's do that. I like that better. Oh, my God. Like, like the other day. I'm in the kitchen. I'm making dinner. My other daughter, Tia, is on Snapchat, not Snapchat, um, FaceTime on my iPad. Ashley's sitting there, and I don't know how the hell we got on the conversation of sex stuff, <laughs> but I said that her mother gave me a pack of cards for Christmas one year, <laughs> that I hadn't opened and it was it was a sex game. Well Ashley has to break it open and she has to start reading it. And I'm <laughs> Naturally. It's, like, it's like a charades kind of thing where you have to enact what they said, right? But it's not like it it's just like words. Like it it was weird. Like so, reverse cowgirl. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like really yeah. So, yeah, we, so we had, like, the weirdest conversation. You know, when I get together with the girls, doesn't matter if it's Michelle, Ashley, Tia, you know. Auntie. Or, or my sister. We come up with the weirdest stuff. Like, and we laugh until we just about throw up. You know, and it's, like, just random stuff that comes out of our mouth. <laughs> You know, I on the way here, I just ended up talking about everything. It's like verbal vomit. And yeah. so I was saying... It's the therapy van. I was saying... Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was saying it's the therapy van. Yep. It's the crochet therapy van. 
So, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. You it's, probably overheard a ton of conversations. <laughs> it's just, there's too many to remember. There's some conversations I wish I hadn't heard. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, seriously. <laughs> it's like, from a mom's ears and stuff, it's like, mm-mm. I did not hear that. Mm -mm -mm. But that's payback. Oh yeah, well. We Mom used to be an oversharer with me, so <laughs> now it's uh. Yeah, how does that happen? You know, like you like to talk. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I guess yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, hey. And it's the worst when it's all the women in our family together in one room. God help us if we have wine or beer or any oh, type of alcoholic yeah. beverage. Sangria, oh, actually. Yeah. Sangria was pretty yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that some of the viewers can, you know, relate to that, you know. Yeah, you, you get the women breaking it down in the kitchen and... Yeah. It's like... Mm -mm. Con some of the conversations you wish that you could have just delete, 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 you know. It's like, yeah. But the shock value, the like shock value. the look you get on your face is just so priceless. That is one thing about my girls is they love the shock value. We, we love the shock value and making other women in our family cry with happy emotion. Yeah. We don't want you to sad cry. That's not cool. Yeah. But oh, it, yeah, the sappy cards, the sappy, you know. Me and Michelle, younger, serenading auntie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's. <laughs> In nineties moves. <laughs> I still remember when we were we were in a, a vehicle, my car I think it was. And we were humiliating to you. <laughs> we were we were talk we were listening to Backstreet Boys or something mm. and Michelle start coming up with new moves. Oh yeah. Know. And it was the toilet brush. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's because there was cute guys, you thought, in the car over. Yeah. And we were stopped at the stoplight, so I'm doing all the moves, and I'm going, this is the toilet brush. Yeah. And she's like, and the plunger. The plunger. And I was just laughing. I was she's just like, what? Is putting on shades, putting the hood up. If she could have, like, sunk into the car, she would have. And she's going, oh, my God, I hate you. And I'm going, I know. Oh, it was, it was bad. <laughs> oh, I totally screwed this up. <laughs> I'm going, why isn't this right? Oh my god. Okay, frogging. <laughs> bit. Oh man. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Ooh, this is kind of a good one. What was the most memorable gift you've received? Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't think I could say that one on camera. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, uh. well, something not dirty, Mom. I, guess I think that means yeah. sexual so, something, nature. <laughs> something PG. Yeah. Well, it is a funny story, though. Um, for the first time ever, George decided that he was, he wanted to surprise me and, you know, the, the worst way. <laughs> And so, you can probably guess where he went. <laughs> well, he lost the gift. Oh, this one. <laughs> oh, he, yes. He lost the gift. We He couldn't find it on Christmas morning. He looked under the tree. He looked in the bedroom. He looked everywhere. He could not find it. And he was freaking out. And I was like, what's the big deal? Like, why are you so upset? Why are you so freaking out? And he's like, you don't understand. <laughs> we got to find this, right? Well, what had happened, what had happened was, as Seta would say, we, the day, the day before, we went to my sister's place and dropped off all their gifts. <laughs> <laughs> George's granddaughter, who was like nine, <laughs> uh, we went and dropped off her gifts. So when we came home to open up our gifts, he was just losing his mind for like an hour. And he said, I said, well, what kind of wrapping paper was it wrapped in? He's like, 
the same as everything else. And I'm going, oh my God. I, and my thought was, oh my God, he bought me an engagement ring. So I'm like, we got to find this gift. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I'll help you. And what does it look like? How big is it? And he's like, well, it's like this big, right? And I'm thinking, yes, I got the engagement ring. Oh, my God. Right? And so finally, it, we, we call my sister. We talk to my sister, and we're like, did you happen to find a gift that wasn't meant for you? <laughs> and she's like, I don't think so. And then he called his, his son and said, like, because we thought his son, we would never be he would never speak to us again if he found this gift but uh, I had no idea so we're rushing around trying to figure this out and finally it fell into a bag of some sort of gifts like because you buy gift bags I guess it fell in there and <laughs> it was like I'm going oh my god okay we found it great so he's just like oh thank god and I'm like why are you so freaking freaked out? He says, you'll understand when you open it. <laughs> and I'm thinking, well, I wouldn't want my sister to get my engagement ring. And, you know, my granddaughter wouldn't know what to do with it. So, you know, whatever. So I'm like all excited. And I, I'm like, okay. And I open it up. It was not an engagement ring. <laughs> Let's just say it was something that required batteries. Um, <laughs> something from the adult fun house yes my jaw hit the ground and he says now do you understand why we had to find this gift and a part of me was so disappointed the other part of me was laughing hysterically <laughs> and I was like I can't believe he actually went into one of those stores because that's just not him the other part of me was like, oh my God, my sister would have, she would have rolled on the ground. She would have laughed so hard. She would be able to breathe. Oh, she would have. She and, would have and you never would have lived it down. Oh, no. she would have peed her pants. She would have been laughing so hard. My son-in-law, on the other hand, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> he would not have found the humor in this. Uh, and we would have never have seen our granddaughter again. But <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, that was the most memorable. <laughs> we will never forget that. George will never live it down. <laughs> and yeah, and I never got my engagement ring. So until many years later. <laughs> so yeah. You? <laughs> Can you top that? <laughs> Not. I don't know. I don't no, nothing um, uh, sexual in nature, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, it was actually this year, and it was I was working really hard in the summer, and oh, this sucks. I'm the I'm the kind of <laughs> <laughs> I'm the kind of person that. I, I'm so happy for everybody when they get things. I'm excited for them. Like I, I, I'm looking at it going, yay you, right? So I'm working in the summer and Gabriel says, oh, well, my mom's planning a, a family trip to Mexico. And I'm like, go oh, right on. You have your passport. You guys are going to have a blast. Take tons of pictures. I love you. And he's like, well, you're part of the family and they're wondering if you because I don't go anywhere if you would be willing to like if you want to go with us because they think that it's something you'd really enjoy and I'm going well, I don't go anywhere <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, I live in a very uncultured little box and I'm trying to learn <laughs> I read books <laughs> so she got to go to Mexico. I went to Mexico and the whole time I was on the plane and when the plane went up I giggled like a four-year-old and, <laughs> and then they said okay like you can get up and walk around go to the bathroom or whatever. I had a grin ear to ear like the Cheshire cat and I'm going I can't believe I'm on a plane. I'm on a plane. I don't do this. I'm gonna be 29 in June. I've never done anything or gone anywhere. This is happening. So, his family took me to Mexico for three weeks. 
And you have to understand, I never thought I would do anything like that in my life. I'm perfectly happy to watch Netflix and crochet and look at pictures of other people's vacations. So, <laughs> we were all very jealous. And that was this Christmas, this past Christmas. Yeah, well, while we're all freezing our butts off over oh, yeah. here, you're in Mexico. There were some, <laughs> yeah. we, were, we weren't by the coast, so it was, it was kind of cool. But yeah, I spent three weeks in Mexico, we went to three different places. We went to a little village outside of Oaxaca where they basically make their own yarn and make their own thread. And it's all like the the natural way of dying. Like they go and get like the cochinilla and they go up the mountain and get like rocks so that they can make blue dye. It was, I was in heaven. I wanted to move in. I didn't want to leave. I'm I going, was so jealous. Um, I would have loved to have seen that. Yeah. That would like, oh yeah. It, it was great. So I, I'm already going, you know, traveling wasn't that bad and Mexico was not as expensive I don't know why I had it built in my head that it's like, oh, I don't go traveling, that's expensive, but... What am I doing? It's like, Sitting here, it's something you can to do. her about talking about yarn and stuff, and then I just totally buggered this up again. <laughs> it's like... So, <laughs> the most heartfelt, the most extravagant, surprising gift I've ever gotten was this last Christmas, and Gabriel's family, they took me to Mexico, and then it was... So a week or two after I got back that all this happened with my mom. So it was yeah. almost like foreshadowing of like, you need to have a really good time and this needs to be like a highlight and you know, just live it. Like I ate crickets. <laughs> I can't say that, but you have to that out. Yes. I ate worms and crickets, we were in it. So Michelle dropping the F bombs. I'm so oh proud. <laughs> Oh my god, so... <laughs> my god. Well, like, you also stay up later than me, like... Ugh. I know I'm turning 29, but I swear to god I'm the old person in the family. I mean, we eat cream of wheat, we f <laughs> 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 We love butters... Okay. <laughs> we love butterscotch and vanilla and plain things. Cut is just being edited. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> okay, so thanks a lot for joining us on our first episode of Hooking and Whining. Hooking and Whining. And uh, hopefully you didn't get too bored. <laughs> hopefully, once we get going on this, hopefully it'll be a lot better. <laughs> Bailey's just doing some weird crap here. <laughs> Did you want to come here? You want to be part of this too? Okay, okay. come here. Oh, come here. Oh, here we go. Okay. There you go. Okay. So, uh, yeah, join us next time. And who knows what's going to come out of our mouth. <laughs> Hopefully nothing too embarrassing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah, no problem. I mean, this is fun. Hopefully we can do this often, you know. She's going to be moving over onto the this side of the island uh, within the next few months anyways, so we'll be able to do this, hopefully on a regular basis. We'll be able to pet all the yarn. Pet all the yarn. Yarn petting. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I kind of think it's soft. Is that like a fetish thing? Like, Could be. Okay, we had that talk, so it's, we're going to say it's <laughs> worship. Worship. Yes. Yarn, yarn worship. Yarn worshiping. <laughs> Yarn worshiping. Okay. All right. We're going to go now. <laughs> so thanks for joining us. Bye. I just wanted to say again in case I forgot anybody. I really appreciate everything that everybody has done for my mom. She's my best friend. She's my best friend, sometimes she feels like my sister, sometimes I'm the mom, 
but all in all, she's my mom and she's been there for me and for so many people, for everything. She's the kind of person that if you need 20 bucks for gas, no problem, and ride to work, no problem. She sees somebody hitchhiking, no problem. She's always giving and she hasn't accepted anything in her life and this has been really hard for her and I want to appreciate everything. I want, I want to help. I want to do what I can for you guys and give back. I just, I really, I'm thankful. My mom is everything to our family and I want to thank everyone who's donated, everyone who's participated in the raffles, all the well wishes, the cards, the crochet hearts and the angels. She isn't up to being on camera yet but hopefully soon she'll be able to talk to you instead of me because she's probably better on camera than I am, <laughs> obviously. But she is trying to do her best. She is on, hopefully on the road to remission and hopefully you'll get to see her soon. Thank you so much.